Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new season of Love After Lockup. Let me tell y'all something, baby. That love during lockup was a fool, but this new season of Love After Lockup, I need y'all to tell somebody who knows somebody who gonna tell somebody to come over here and listen to these reviews because baby, it is going up on a Friday. Now, if you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with a friend. Hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. So, the new season has started. New season, same foolishness. But it seems a little bit amplified, honey. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. So, we, these, we see this sign, and it says, three days until release. First up is Zariah and Troy. Turn on the lights of heaven, Lord. Shine on me. Baby, they in the amen church. <laughs> child, I'm waiting on Deacon Fry to sashay out, child. Mm, mm, mm. So Zariah is in the church house watching the choir rehearse. Now, both of her parents are pastors. She said that they were super strict when she was growing up. Yeah, uh-huh. These, these PKs be wilding out when they get a taste of freedom. You got to give them just a little taste. You can't be so, so, so strict because then they give you Zariah. But we're going to get into it. So she went over there and got a glimpse of the hood life. And then she was like, gotta watch yo, gotta get a rough neck. So she went over there and got Troy. Now, her parents are very interesting. Her mom is ready to make him the youth pastor. Uh, slow down, Sister Sledge. We do not need him to be laying hands on nobody, praying over nobody. Okay, let him get acclimated to the real world, child. Absolutely not. She said that they've been together for five years, and they're from very different backgrounds, but they've been married for three years. Now, y'all get this. Come closer. Turn your, 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 your earpiece up. Do whatever it is you got to do. Now, she was married before right married before to her son's father her son's father has been locked up since her son was five years old now she stayed down for him for two years but now she's with his ex cellmate let me say it again you go over to your boy's house and you realize that his fine friend is his roommate and you figure out oh i got the wrong friend that's basically how that went down except we're gonna pull a uno reverse and he gonna be in damn jail so she went down to CB4, cell block four, and decided that she was going to pick Troy up because he's fine. Yeah, man, I had him once, but I got him all the time. You can't sleep at night. <laughs> Baby, this is crazy. Mm -mm -mm. Baby, that drawstring ponytail got you acting a fool. It's a small prison system. I will say a small world, but girl, what the hell is going on? What is really going on? She said she was visiting one day and she pointed out that troy was in there and he was super fine and she had her eye on him since then now he's saying that he met her because you know she used to do three-way calls for him and she really makes him happy and she's beautiful this is so messy and ridiculous girl not you going in there and getting your ex-husband's ex cellmate it's too many that exes it's too many exes and too many o's honey it's a fool then she turns around and says that her and her ex got a divorce because Troy said he didn't want to move forward with her being married. Uh, baby, that's usually how it works. What am I watching? This is really somebody's real life, y'all. Now he want to make an honest woman out of you. <laughs> baby, this is crazy. Now, her mom does seem to be supportive. Troy's calling while they're sitting there talking. Her mom is trying to ask if he's ready to make his pool pit debut. Ma'am, he don't want to go behind that pool pit now. Leave him alone. This is a fool. He then says that he's a woman magnet. And when he gets out, he has to contact certain people. Contact certain people like who? That ex? Because there seemed to be a whole bunch of exes going on. And according to what went on later on in the episode, it makes me feel like you got to contact some women to let them know I can't talk to you no more. I'm going home with ponytail. I ain't going to be able to talk to you no more. Now, I was trying to pay attention, but that hair was giving dream girl. Turn the wigs around. Turn the wigs around. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. Baby, she is a pretty lady. But that camel hump drawstring ponytail is playing in my face. And it's giving lo lovely lady humps. Baby, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't damn like it. Now, I did hear her say 
in the midst of me cackling, looking at that ponytail, baby, because I was so distracted. I did hear her say that he adopted her son since he's been incarcerated. Now, let me get this straight. You went to visit his biological daddy. Y'all were together and you stayed down for two years until the son got five. Then you decided, eh, I kind of like his cellmate better. So you decided you took the man's parental rights and had his ex-cellmate adopt his son? Girl, you crazy as hell. You are crazy. My question is why? Because don't he got a daddy already? Why would you do that? She left the birth certificate blank because his daddy didn't act like a daddy. So she thought whoever it is that she would marry would adopt her son. This lady needs to go see the lady. Playing games with your son is insane. That is insane. Girl, Kim and Joey. Why do I feel like I know Kim from somewhere? I don't know. It's like her face is very familiar. It's giving a very familiar vibe. I don't know where I know her from, but I feel like I know her. But anywho, Kim has been married twice. She was married to one man while she was divorcing the other. I don't know what was going on. Like she was trying to get with the one man that she's married to now while she was divorcing the other man. And it's just a fool. Now she's known Joey since high school. She's like, yeah, I was attracted to his swag. I wish y'all would retire the word swag. And why when they panned over to said swag, it was giving Malibu's most wanted. Absolutely Lily not. No ma'am Pam. Now he's been in prison for 13 years. He got out briefly. He messaged her. She was over the moon because, oh my gosh, the cool guy from high school messaged me. So then they got really close, really fast, but he was only out for a hundred days. Then in 2020, when he knew everybody was locked down, clank, clank, they reconnected and then he proposed. One thing them inmates gonna do, they gonna be married to somebody on the outside. They gonna be married to somebody on the outside. I ain't never seen so many marriages in my life. Now, her daddy thinks that he stole a dirt bike from him with his cousin back when he was younger. She thinks, well, if he did it, then he would just confess to me. He would tell me, Dad, uh, ma'am, why do you want to marry a man that stole from your daddy? Huh? Say what now? Oh, okay, don't make no sense. Now, her daddy was real sweet and he was real supportive because he knows that Kim going to do what Kim going to do. She said that she's been in a relationship ever since she was five. She is a serial dater. Man, we need to take a break. We need to take a break and we need to take a beat. She says she spent about $15,000 on Joey. Where do these people get all of this disposable income? Because if you go over there on the TikTok, baby, we can barely buy rice. Okay, we can't buy salt. But y'all got money to blow. Every time I look at a season of this show, I'm just wondering, where do you get all of this money? But then I look at your living situation and I'm like, oh, okay. You took it out of there. Okay, got it. <laughs> this is crazy now joey is a recovering addict she's blaming his cheating on being an addict no ma'am so when he used to do lots of things like he used to steal he used to rob he used to cheat it's because he just wasn't in his right mind ma'am he might have been on a substance but cheating is just it's it's in you not on you and i want to point this out about zariah doesn't zariah kind of look like ella may if y'all don't know who i'm talking about now, Ella would never wear that ponytail because I don't know exactly what's going on. Okay, the hair on here is giving 2003. Do you hear me? Moving food. Shantae and False, formerly known as True. Now, if you know my reviews from Love During Lockup, I called True False because everything about him is a damn lie. Now, she was like, I was really contemplating on whether or not we should stay together. And girl, okay, you ain't fooling nobody but yourself. She's getting ready to go get him, right? They've never seen each other since he's been locked up. Now, she sent pictures because remember, the pictures got sent back because he was getting some other stuff from some other people. But she's finally going to see him, of course, because he's getting out. She's worried about him liking her in person. Oh, Shantae. He said that he's talked to 60 females since he's been in jail and he can't wait to start his life with Shantae. Females. Whenever a man refers to a woman as a female, that tells me all I need to know about you. And the streets are saying, you still a deadbeat, you still a loser and you still a cheater. Now I don't know how true it is, false, but are, um, they saying that you still a low life. So she gets to the jail, she's nervous child. She done brought number balloons to signify his 13 years. Girl, what is happening? He is not graduating from high school. Don't nobody want to be reminded in 13 years. So his sister and her kids, they show up as well. False better not come out acting funny. If he come out and acts funny towards Shantae, baby, I'm finna go up in this review. 
Let's just wait, y'all. Letitia and Keith. Now, Letitia is an accountant that specializes in business taxes. Now, while she's in the office, because she didn't drop her kids off at school and everything, she gets to the office. While she's in the office, she gets a call from her husband saying that he could be getting out earlier. There was some law passed and now he served all his time. He about to come home. She met him through a friend because the friend had a prison bay and she had sent pictures of them to the prison bay and Keith saw the pictures and they've been married for two years and he's been in there for 10 years. They got married by proxy. A uh, side note. I am so mad that nobody told her that she had those two cow licks. Baby, her hair was sticking straight out on the sides, baby. Her leave out was leaving. I would fire everybody. Do you know? <laughs> everybody will be on the unemployment line. And don't try to get unemployment because I'm not going to approve it. How dare you let this woman sit up on TV and not tell her, slick it, slick it, it you leave on both sides. Like they both were standing straight up. That was crazy to me. I couldn't even focus. So anywho, she's saying she's never had sex with the man, but she's ready. And he could be getting out any day now. So you mean to tell me that you got married to this man just off of his game on the phone? Because you know, they talk a good game when they locked up. They'll tell you anything. They will sell you a dream. You mean to tell me you fell for that and you've never laid it down? She said they have a family of seven between the two of them, but they want plenty of kids together. She hasn't done the deed in five years. Okay. Okay. This is about to be a fool. Her friends don't think that she's ready to actually be in a relationship with him. They don't even know each other, but um, I hope she's not going to be screaming every episode because she was screaming all through the place. Oh my gosh. And then when she got home, she was like, ah, I'm like, oh my gosh, girl, don't be doing all that damn screaming because I don't want to hear all that. Hope and hey arthur now his name is arthur but i'm gonna call him hey arthur i'm gonna call him hey arthur so she's a truck driver baby hope something else <laughs> baby hope something else oh child now i see you driving the truck and whatnot i'm proud of you girl i see you driving the big rig she's from dallas arthur is calling her while she's you know filming she met him when he was locked up the first time now they met through one of her friends her friend was visiting her prison babe baby no ma'am why the friends always hooking y'all up? We wouldn't be friends no more. Because baby, don't think that less of me that you want me to sit and talk to this man and he locked up and I don't really know what he's locked up for. Absolutely not. She's like, yeah, it was love at first sight. The love, I just, I mean, it's just, I just love him. I love everything about him. Okay, girl. Now it's the day that she has to go get him. She walking around the hotel looking crazy. 15 minutes late for the release. And I was surprised that they be late, child, because some of them be spending the night out there. If it was one of these past seasons, baby, you remember that old school Marshalls commercial where the women used to be standing at the glass waiting on Marshalls to open? That's exactly how these people on the outside wait on their prison base. Girl, not you being 15 minutes late, girl. You don't care nothing about him. I'm talking about her nerves are just shot. She's like, I woke up throwing up. Ma'am, you've seen him before. You've been with him on the outside. Either A, you're doing something you ain't got no business doing, or B, you don't look like what he remember. It's something, because something ain't adding up. Y'all, this woman is an hour and 45 minutes late. So they're calling, trying to get an ETA, and she's still at the hotel. So I'm like, give me 15 minutes. Girl, get a move on. Isn't this what you've been waiting for? What is taking so long? So his mom is there, and she got everybody waiting. He cannot even be released because she's the only person he's allowed to be released to. So his mom does not like Hope at all because she don't trust her. She's like, yeah, I don't like her. This is my baby boy. He's my youngest. He's my last. Baby, if you were taking care of him like that, he wouldn't be in now. If you want him, take him with you. See, I don't have time for moms like that, honey. That wouldn't work for me. So Hope pulls up in a damn 18-wheeler. Ma'am. <laughs> Ma'am, is that that cup in his truck? You were about to lose your job. Get this damn. You you were about to lose your job. Girl, not you taking that big rig up there to pick that man up. And when people pass by you, if they pull their hands down, you're going to have to honk that horn. You remember when you were younger? I don't know if y'all used to do this, but we used to do this all the time. When you are driving down the street and you see an 18-wheeler truck, if you pull your hand like you're pulling a string two times and they honk their horn like, Bum, bum. I don't know if that was just the 90s. They probably don't do that anymore. But when I saw her come to pick him up in that big rig, I said, oh, child, this is nothing but embarrassment. Mm -mm -mm. 
she gets out with pink hair standing up on the top of her damn head and she's shocked to see his mama there waiting Zariah and Troy now her sister is at the house okay but as I'm looking at this I was like okay correction her sister lives at the house how this gonna work she's also never had sex with Troy okay this is gonna be a fool she said they talked about his size and if it's too small they're going to get him a penile enlargement baby these people are living on fantasy island if he even had that conversation with you and agreed to that it means that it may be little bitto and the last thing you need is a tattoo bigger than your man's penis because <laughs> baby let me tell y'all something yeah, let me tell y'all something this lady is clownery at its finest y'all listen to this Troy tells us that he hopes that her sister is gone by the time that he gets there so he can get to know his wife her sister is worried that she can't walk around with her booty cheeks out baby your cheeks shouldn't be out around your nephew anyway like what well, how y'all living honey it shouldn't even be around out around him no way so Zariah is like girl now just wear what you want to wear it's cool no ma'am no ma'am do not wear what you want to wear put some damn clothes on matter of fact Let's go fill out you an application since Zariah wants to be silly and invite this crucial conflict into the house. Like what is going on? And I'm not worried about the sister. I'm worried about him. So she's showing her sister this jewelry and this money bouquet that she has, right? But she kept pronouncing it bouquet. And I'm like, let me go see the correct pronunciation because what is this? But y'all, why I messed around and found out? I checked and I guess bouquet is wrong i'm saying bouquet but actually it is bouquet tell me something good but i ain't gonna never baby you can never make me say bouquet <laughs> never i'ma always say bouquet it just don't sound right this lady said she spent fifty thousand dollars on him 50 g's so her sister feels like he may be taking advantage of her you think y'all then she picks up her shirt and has troy written in a big red letters tattooed on her side girl did you get that tattoo down at the prison as well because what is this oh baby no ma'am it's giving desperado you went and got a large and extra large you supersized a tattoo on your damn waist and you've never even had sex with him and if you were to have sex with him and it wasn't given what's supposed to be gave you are going to drop a bag on a penis enlargement? They have to write this for y'all to say. Y'all cannot make me believe that this is real and these people are saying these things of their own free will. Somebody is writing a script, is giving Tyler Perry realness from the church down to the cellmates. Tyler, if we see a new movie called Loving Troy, then I know some. <laughs> This is crazy. Oh, child. Mm, mm, mm. Moving forward. Kim and Joey. So Kim is at her friend's Jennifer's house, right? And she was watching the kids for her. Jennifer is worried about things and how they're going to be once he gets out, especially with him being a recovering addict. Now, Jennifer has her wits about her and she's really trying to tell Kim things that absolutely make sense. But Kim is just thirsty for a man. I don't know if she has abandonment issues. I'm not sure if it's a self-esteem issue, but she must have a man. Now, her last husband was an alcoholic and Kim just wants to be loved at all costs. And she is not thinking straight. So while she's getting the kids ready for bed, he's calling. Now, he's trying to tell him some kind of story. I don't know what's going on. Honey. He's trying to tell him a bedtime story. But the younger one did not have his listening ears on. When I tell you he was screaming through the entire phone conversation. And I also hate how they involve their kids so soon. Shantae and False. So False finally emerges. Hey, sir. Oh, Shantae, you look so nervous. The first thing this man asked was, do I smell like jail? Yes, it's giving cell block de parfum. <laughs> cell block de toilet. Honey, that's what it's giving. I'm surprised his mama wasn't there. Shantae, you looked pretty. Now, I don't know about them little boots, but you looked pretty when you went to visit him. Don't worry, girl. Okay, because he ain't no prize at all. He can't believe he's free. Ain't no feeling like being free. Honey, he cannot believe he's in the free world. He's like, I'm actually having a conversation with y'all. I'm actually doing an interview. Uh huh. He said that he does not like authority and he used to like to rob people for the thrill of it because he loved the fact that he could potentially get caught. So he started at 13. He went into prison at 19. 
Now he planned to rob a bank, right? But the getaway driver was in the wrong spot. So when he got out, he started running. They end up catching him and he got 15 years. Now I want to ask y'all this question. Do y'all think that he's attracted to Shantae or is he just settling because she held him down when he was locked up? Because all he keeps saying is she showed me the true definition of love while I was in prison. She stayed down for me when nobody else did. She was there for me when I didn't have and she was there for me. But I don't hear him say anything else. So to me, it seems like a relationship of convenience. Hope and hey, Arthur. So his mom was like, where you been? What took you so long? This girl gonna say, I had to get cute. You had to get cute. And this is what you came up with? This wetsuit? Girl, goodbye and good night. <laughs> girl, goodbye and good night. Baby, the way that mama looked her up and down, like cute. Honey, in her soldier boy voice, what is cute? So they arguing back and forth and forth and back about who's been there for him. And I'm like, I wouldn't even be arguing with that mama. I would get right on in my 18 wheeler, bust a U turn. And head back on the interstate, honey. I'd be on the I-10 by 10. You can pick your son up and then have him come call me when he get out. Now, the first time he went in, she had told him that she had needs, right? And he agreed that she could have sex with other people with no emotion. But then he ended up getting in his feelings. And she had lied and said that she stopped doing it. But really and truly, she was cheating on him. Ooh, child, not to be the other way around. Okay. He found out by looking in her old phone and his mama wants him to come to Vegas with her and be around the family but she wants him to decide on his own what he's going to do now I cannot see Hope and Hey Arthur staying together absolutely not Letitia and Keith baby this right here was crazy work y'all listen to this now she's home from work she's telling them that Keith may be released soon and she's very he's very close to getting out now his aunt Marsha is there She's gotten very, very close with his aunt. So she's there watching the kids. Now her oldest daughter is not feeling Keith at all. You can see it, it is written all over her face. She feels like he's a stranger. There's a stranger in my house. It's definitely gonna be a stranger in your damn house. The younger daughter doesn't know any better. Talking about he's extra close to my youngest daughter. Baby, she don't know no better. Younger kids are very impressionable. Your oldest daughter is a teenager and she knows that this is not the right thing to do. What kind of example are you setting for her? I would move him in my house if my daughter felt that way and I could visibly see that she's upset. He is not moving in my house. Do you understand how this can really change the trajectory of your relationship with your daughter? As soon as they hand her that diploma, she out. As soon as she turned 18, baby, she gonna escape. Do you hear me? Now, she is letting her six-year-old call this man daddy. No, ma'am. Why are you letting that little girl call that man daddy? That's not her father. Y'all really trip me out with that. It's every single season, there's one that is allowing their children to call the man daddy. Now, you got your teenager sitting here looking like at any moment she's ready to run away. And you're letting your six-year-old call him daddy. The six-year-old sitting there crying, talking about, I want my daddy to come home. And let me tell you something. I don't blame the little girl because she doesn't know. You see families on TV. There's a mommy. There's a daddy. There's a family. And she wants that. She's a kid. She doesn't know any better. But I don't feel like it's right for you to let this little girl be crying over a man. But then your other daughter is sitting here saying to you with her facial expressions i don't want this man here baby if this don't work this little six-year-old baby about to be crushed moving forward so her oldest daughter is wondering why do y'all gotta do it so soon like why does he have to get out right now i thought it's gonna be a little longer uh Letitia, i'm gonna tell you this right here these are pivotal years he would have to live in his own spot or in a halfway house baby he couldn't come now he could not come now you don't know that man you never laid down with that man you've never physically touched that man that's a no for me big dog zariah and troy so she's going to see her psychic. I was a little bit confused because say what now? She's going to see her psychic, but then she says, you know, my psychic is a prophet from God. Girl, goodbye. She wants to know about Troy, right? So the psychic said, Troy has a lot to talk to you about. And when he gets out, there will be drama with his baby mama. Okay, there's going to be some drama. So Zariah was like, yeah, his ex could pop up at our house and she could cause drama. So you got a man's name tattooed across your damn body and have given him $50,000. And not only have you never been intimate with the man, his baby mama could potentially be in interference. 
Okay, girl. So she was asking the psychic, is it going to work out? Is it going to work out? She said, the card says, that's a lie. The lie detector test determined that was a lie, honey. Y'all will not be together. The cards say no. The producers say no. The audience says no. That tattoo says no. That ponytail says no. That hump says no. It's a no, big dog. <laughs> Baby, it's a damn no. Mm, mm, mm. Kim and Joey. So Joey is getting released, right? And she's leaving the kids with, with Joey's mom. She rented a cabin for them to have one-on-one -on -one time together. Okay, because that doesn't give scary movie at all. Miss Tammy has been there for her since the boys were very little. And Miss Tammy is Joey's mom, okay? So she's like the makeshift grandma. She's come in and taking that role. His mom loves Kim. And she's happy that her son is with a nice Christian woman like Kim. While she's on the way to get him, right? Okay, because we thinking Kim ain't about to bring no drama. I know I was. I was like, Kim ain't about to get nothing, baby. She gets a call. You have a collect call from a jail facility. So, baby, she gets a collect call and she on the way to come pick him up. Now, some woman named Ashley done messaged him and told him that Kim is still messing with her ex-husband. And she was like, what? What are you saying? He said, are you cheating on me? Are you messing with another man? Easy there, killer. Okay. First of all, we don't even know if this is real. Who is Ashley? And we need the 411. And that was the end of the episode. So next week, I guess Kim is going to let us know whether or not she's actually cheating. Now, y'all know she can't be alone. But the way that she was talking about those exes, I do not believe for one second that she was still over there with that ex. And if she were, she probably was co-parenting. Kim, I'm trying to help y'all, child. Now, I don't know how it's going to go down, but y'all comment down below. Y'all tell me exactly what y'all thought about this episode. If you have not watched it, please go and watch it. It was a good episode with a whole lot of foolery. Just like we like it for Felon Friday. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.